how to develop the hacker mindset. This is the most important mindset to develop, and I'm not going to sit here and act like I am the greatest hacker in the world. This is something that was pretty difficult for me to develop. It took me uh, quite some time, and I want to help you guys on your journey, even if you're a beginner, intermediate, you know, if you're advanced, maybe you already have it. You could share some good advice in the comments section as well, as you guys always do. But I want to really help you guys along this journey because if you can develop this mindset, especially early on, you're going to have a way easier time uh, in pen testing, uh, even on certifications like your OSCP, your hands-on certifications, on the job, all of that. Hey guys, what's up? It's Ryan from Elevate Cyber. The hacker mindset, right? What is it and uh, why is it so important in this field? So the hacker mindset I would describe is the mindset, one of curiosity, most certainly, um, thinking outside the box, thinking kind of creatively, but also that of kind of, I would say, exhausting all possibilities. Because one thing you have to realize with, uh, with pen testing, you're not just trying to find a way in. I mean, if you can find the RCE, if you can find you know, the critical vulnerability, that's amazing. That's great. But you don't even, you don't just stop there, right? You try to find, and, and I guess here is where it differs a bit between CTFs and actual pen testing. With the CTF, it is way more, I guess you would say two-dimensional in the fact that your only goal is to find the critical vulnerability that gets you code execution. You get user level access, you get root access, you're done for the most part, right? And the OSCP does a good, a decent job with the labs of getting you to think outside of this narrow box, right? In that you can hack certain boxes on the lab, but then you might find some extra goodies after you get the root account that will allow you to pivot to other networks or information that will help you um, compromise other systems on their network as well. So they really try to emphasize a little bit more, but even still, it is kind of limited in their scope, right? Like you're not going to be looking for cross-site scripting or some of these other web vulnerabilities or even non-web vulnerabilities that just don't result in getting a shell necessarily. Normally, you don't look as much into certain vulnerabilities on CTFs. Like I wouldn't really spend much time looking for cross-site scripting, cross-site request forgery, anything that involves attacking uh, a client typically. I wouldn't even pay much attention to on a CTF, but if I'm on the job, then that's absolutely relevant, right? So that is a key distinction. When it comes to CTFs and things like that, they're great challenges, and I mean, I do them a lot on this channel. Obviously, I really believe in them, but you gotta also understand that it is a bit of a different mindset. With CTFs, you're looking for a way to hack the box. You're looking for a way in, right? You're trying to prove that you can hack something. With pen testing on the job, you're trying to prove that something can't be hacked, right? So what is the difference here? One In one scenario, you're trying to prove that you can hack something, and the other one, you're trying to prove that something can't be hacked. Well, like I said, with the CTF, you just gotta prove that you can hack it once, you're good. With on-the-job pen testing, you gotta prove that it can't be hacked in any way. Right, so you gotta exalt. Uh, you gotta exhaust all possibilities, and you know this could benefit you. You know, with the try harder mentality on OSCP, right? Certain sometimes it's gonna be really hard to find a way in. But here's the challenge of the real world, right? When you're dealing with the OSCP boxes, at least you know there is some way in, because otherwise there wouldn't be a box, right? There is gonna be a way to to breach it, to get the root shell, all that. In the real world, there's no guarantee. Like, maybe it's a hardened system to the point that, you know, there is nothing critical to find. And that's where it gets tricky. If you don't have that mindset of the hacker mindset, right, and really just, you know, thinking creatively and not giving up instantly, really really exhausting all possibilities, you're going to drastically lower uh, what you can find and you're going to have a lot harder of a time. So it could be tempting to look up solutions to things. And I'm guilty of this uh, sometimes as well, where I want to rush to look up an answer to something. 
But really, you need to push yourself and challenge yourself to persist with trying to figure something out, especially if you're going for OSCP as well. Um, and, and it does, that's one reason why I do think OSCP does a pretty good job of teaching, um, preparing you for the real world is because it does on the one hand, yeah, it does. It is, it is CTF like in the fact that you're looking for that one way in, but at the same time, you are really forced to exhaust all possibilities a lot of times because it can, some of the boxes can be a little bit difficult. The exploits you get are not typically ever going to work right out of the box. So you got to, you know, persist, keep trying, you know, try harder, right? <laughs> and uh, find, you know, find the solution. And basically on the job, it's like that, but like 10x because you don't, like I said, you don't know if there is a solution or not to begin with. And uh, yeah, it just comes down to really persisting and Sometimes you might be dealing with technology that you have no idea how it works and you just have to piece it together using the hacker mindset. Thinking, you know, sometimes I found a lot of uh, ways to hack things just by Googling as if I was a developer, right? Like, okay, well, I don't know how this function works. Let me just Google, like, information about it as if I'm a developer trying to figure out how to use it. And I'm like, I find all these answers like, oh, it can do that and that. What if I use that for this instead of that, the thing that they expect me to use it for? And you know, that, that kind of creativity is, you know, combined with being persistent um, and exhausting all the possibilities is really going to give you a lot of success. Maybe, maybe it does, maybe it results in nothing, but yeah, you got to keep trying, got to keep going. And you gotta you gotta ingrain this in your in your mind that you're going to exhaust all the possibilities because we want to make sure that even if we do find that RCE and we find a way in, we also want to make sure we don't forget about some of the smaller vulnerabilities. You know, some like something like um, I don't know, like you're even like a, a verbose error message that might give an attacker critical information. Like they're able to enumerate users on the system or something like that, right? We still got to report those at the end of the day. So we got to not only exhaust all possibilities when looking for the criticals, but we need to exhaust all possibilities when looking for those lower findings as well, the less critical stuff. And uh, yeah, if you really make a conscious effort to train up your skill in this area to always implement this, whether you're working on a CTF or you're on the job, or whatever you're doing, you always, if you make a conscious effort to always embody this, then eventually you're going to pick it up and it's going to become more of a natural thing for you. And that's just going to level you up all together. So I hope you guys found value out of this video. If so, hit the like button and subscribe if you haven't already. Leave some comments down in the section below as well. And if you want to learn some more hands-on things, because this was a pretty you know, kind of mindset type of video. If you want to look for some hands-on stuff, check out the What You Need to Know for OSCP uh, playlist on the screen. I'll see you guys right over in those videos. Thanks for watching.